Hello everybody and welcome again to my channel. I have a quite a big project for you this time and therefore I will put this project into three parts so you just know right away from the beginning. As I would like to show you how to make a lady's uh, jacket. You see right here already approximately what I will be doing for you. Well this one I made from a pattern that I've been having quite a while and I made this particular one also quite a while ago. Um, as I like to use the same pattern if it still fits me and if it, it's a good fit anyway. But I like to variate it from time to time which you can do with any of your patterns of course as well. You can change the color to a slight different shape or what I did here as an example I made a tail coat or tail jacket out of it by adding this lovely, as we say, dovetail to it. But in this particular video, all I'm going to show you is how to make this short jacket. So more or less, it's going to be going to approximate to, to your waist. But that doesn't mean that you cannot choose one of your patterns from a jacket, which can be slightly different because the actual work on it will be very very similar and I will explain that to you while we go along. So these three parts that I will be doing about this jacket is that in the first part which is to now and today I will show you exactly the preparation means the cutting and which kind of interfacing you have to put on and where you have to put it on. So this is just completely the preparation which is actually the most important thing. The better you prepared the cutting and all the preparation for the jacket, the easier it is to sew. And as I like to say, in the moment I got anything that I want to stitch totally prepared and cut, then the sewing is really the easy part. So let me explain to you all about the pattern. So I start by explaining to you, uh, first of all, the front piece. My front piece of this jacket is in two parts, as you can see, with this long seam in here. But as an example, if you have a pattern which only has one piece for the front with darts in uh, different positions, that will be exactly the same what you would have to do anyway for the following work we're going to do. So what I did here is, on a board pattern, there's usually no seam allowance anywhere on whatsoever. And I like to always put a one centimeter seam on all my seams. But for the uh, bottom in this particular jacket, on all the bottom parts, I will add three centimeter. So what I did here, you can see I cut my one centimeter all around for the seam. And I added three centimeters for the hem on the bottom. The same on this side piece that I have. I added one centimeter all the way around and three centimeters for my bottom. Now, very important are certain things when you have patterns. You have some marks in certain positions. As an example, this mark here, this is the lapel going to be. And this mark is where you're starting to put your color in. So that is a very, very important uh, cut there or mark that you have to do. If you don't do that mark, you will have no idea where to start or end on the other side. The same about if you have a very round uh, curved seam. Also, put your, the marks in there that are on the pattern, especially if you're not so firm with sewing yet. They will definitely help you a lot to get this piece put together perfectly. Now the next important thing on this is the whole front piece. You should take a big interfacing and iron it on, which I've done here. You can probably see it here. I cut it a little bit smaller, but that it's still in the area where my one seam uh, of my seam will be. So the whole front you got to put an interfacing on. And at the same time I ironed already my hem over exactly 
uh, in the lengths where I would like to have it. So I first of all like to continue with the front as you have this front facing piece which got to be cut exactly from your main material, although this could be as an example uh, just a plain white one to have a contrast for the lapel that you can do as well. But I cut it all from the same material at the moment and here again I added one centimeter and don't forget this mark for your color where it's going to start later. On the bottom I added my three centimeter of hem again but I didn't iron it over, you see later on in the sewing why. But here also again I got my one centimeter seam all the way around. And also very very important is that this front facing piece needs definitely an interfacing on both parts completely ironed on. And on my particular part there was also one piece of lining for the front, the lining piece, and that one I cut also, of course, one centimeter all the way around, but on the hem I only add one centimeter. Because if I do it in the same length as the main material, my lining would be hanging out of the jacket out when I finish it off, and that's what I don't want. So here, in the length, I only added one centimeter. But I like to repeat, in case if you only have some darts in your front piece in, as an example, it's possible you got one coming here out of the sleeve part out and you got one on the bottom. So before you stitch them up, put your interfacing on to give this a certain strength to make the jacket really have a, a good finish at the end. Set, that is all to say for the front pieces at the moment. So we continue talking about the back. Certain things are the same considering the, um, the one centimeter seam that you have to add everywhere and of course you should also add exactly your three centimeters on the bottom again for the hem. Now here on this piece it is not necessary to iron an interfacing on the whole parts on, but you should iron some on just where the seam is on the bottom, the hem. And I did iron this a little bit wider on, which you can probably see. Um, so it goes over the edge where I'm ironing it over. So that is for that piece, but for the middle part of your back, you should definitely also add on this upper area here, this upper part, which means your, your neck part, all the way over your shoulder to your uh, sleeve, where the sleeve will go in. There you should also have um, interfacing on, because that's going to make it much better for your color to be stitched in if you have something firm in that area. So far to that. I do on my pattern here have to do a, a seam on the back. I could have also just folded it over and cut it, but I want to have this seam. It also gives more strength again to the back. And now the side piece from the back. I again add, um, added exactly my one centimeter all the way around. And on the bottom I didn't add the three like here, I only added one centimeter. And on this part, as, as my pattern, the finished board pattern, did not have a lining for the back, but a jacket is not as nice uh, to wear because you hang on the, on the blouse maybe that you're wearing. It's always better to put a full lining in. That's why I took exactly the same pattern for the lining, for the side piece, and as well for the back piece. The only difference what I did here is I did not I try to lie this flat for you so you see it. Here I added on my pattern my one centimeter to do but on the lining if I'm putting this onto the cut edges now you see 
that this is slightly different looking. For a start, you can see it's hanging over here. Well here, I'm going to stitch my one centimeter away on the main material. And then here you can see I put myself a cut in. Because in the middle of the back of the lining, I want to have some widths in which is always good for moving. You get in the car, you got to hold the wheel as an example, and you need some widths in the lining, definitely. So I made myself, from the pattern practically, I, I put the material in a, in a fold here, and I added one and a half centimeters, which gives me a fold in the back of altogether a width of three centimeter extra. Also, what I did is because you see there's something missing here. Well, that you can see on the actual pattern for a start. I hope you can see it. There's this line here. Because that line is for your little trimming part in the lining. On my pattern this was meant just to stitch that in and not a lining, but I don't like this. So, what I did here, I better put it the other way. What I did here, I got my centimeter seam here, and now you can see it through here. I added after this line a one centimeter uh, seam allowance on there, so I will be able, after I cut this one properly, to stitch that onto there. So that is important also again for the back. And now to this part, you can see I have not cut this trimming piece yet reason all these kind of little parts I do not like to cut right away in the correct shape as it's got to be. No, for a part like this you should always cut a slightly bigger piece out of your material out. The same cut interfacing also bigger. Iron the interfacing onto your material on and then take your part and cut it out. Because this makes it not to be pulled, this makes it much more exact and on all little pieces like like the trimmings, like the um, color, which I will show to you again, I always do it like that. I prepare the uh, interfacing with the material and then I do the proper cutting and you will see everything will fit so much better then if you cut this correctly from the material, cut the correct size of the interfacing and then you iron it on, it, it's easily um, a different shape. So that's what we don't want. That's all about the back. Here comes the easy part, the sleeve. And there again, as I would like to add three centimeters on the bottom, I ironed my three centimeters over already and also here I put an interfacing in because the sleeve it's been used so much by getting in and out and it always has a little bit of a, a wear there. It's much better to have an interfacing on there the same on the smaller part of your sleeve. So both of those need the interfacing on the bottom. Again the sleeve lining I only cut one centimeter longer and here as well. But now comes a very important part on the sleeve. Never forget to put your cuttings in that you find in your pattern. Because this one, when you find one quite close to what you might think is the underneath seam, that will always be the front. Don't forget this, uh, this mark on the top because that mark is always where your shoulder should fit with the sleeve. And what's even more important now, on this pattern uh, as an example, you see that there are some marks somewhere on this underneath arm, the, the under sleeve. Because on this particular pattern, my side seam of the jacket is not identical with the underneath uh, seam from the sleeve. Um, that's why this will be a sleeve that definitely has to be stitched totally together first, both sides, before it will be stitched into the jacket. Um, we say 
if I have as an example in um, a very loose uh, sweatshirt or something like that um, I will stitch the sleeve in open we say open because it's not been <coughs> totally stitched together but this one will be stitched in round that means it's got to be totally closed before I can stitch it in so this is the important mark you got to do because this mark will get together with the seam from your side underneath your arm from your jacket, your side seam. And also if you're not so firm with sewing yet, also put yourself those marks in if you have some in the pattern which makes you look, um, which makes you stitch much more exact. Last but not least we come to talk about the color and I did mention to you already on the little trimming I did also here I cut my pieces a bit bigger larger than they're supposed to be at the end and I cut um, an interfacing and I did the same with the under color and with the upper color I ironed it on and now I will cut it one centimeter larger than my pattern is because that's what it needs and also here uh, you will find the fit is so much better and so much more exact than you will never do it any other way after you've tried this once. Okay, I got one more thing as I like to put a little belt on the, um, on the back of the jacket which you can see here on this little drawing that I did. But I have not cut the correct size yet. All I did is I cut out a little leftover that was there anyway, put an interfacing on because I want to have my back halfway finished first before I decide uh, or see how long it's got to be. And for this little piece in the middle I cut an 8 by 8 centimeters loop which will hold it together here then a little bit. But that at the moment is actually everything you need to know about this lovely little short jacket that I'm going to show you now exactly how to do it. So I like to repeat, or maybe I haven't even said it yet, I don't know, I've forgotten. <laughs> this first video today or tutorial is just about all this preparation you got to do on this jacket. Afterwards comes my tutorial number two, where I will show you how to exactly put the lining together and the main material. And the tutorial number three, I will show you how to finish the jacket off, which means how you're adding the lining together with the main material, turning it inside out and finish, finishing it totally off. Oh, one more thing I would like to say, you can see it very well on the picture and earlier on when you saw my jacket. This particular one that I have here, you can see the uh, lapels, they do not fold over to do buttonholes and a button in. These buttons are only put on for show. But what I did on my jacket that you saw on my doll just earlier on, I just put on each side one buttonhole and I added uh, two buttons with a little chain in between and that is also possible what you can do. All right now I wish you much fun by watching my video and maybe you like to prepare a jacket so in the next video we can stitch it together together. Okay so I say thanks for now for watching my video and coming around to my channel. So I say goodbye and tschüss.